little by little to get in, keep getting closer and closer but just right here these by itself just this by itself is not 100 percent secure and for sure that you have the person that committed this crime this method should not be used nor allowed on no criminal cases is unreliable this method is a want to make believe method and a cop out for not having the accurate information that is need to sentence someone for life or to death this not should be used this should not be allowed in the court of law for no type of criminal case because it's unreliable do you see how many people is on that on the family tree can you see how many people is on that the family tree and then they keep breaking it down and getting closer and closer to get to whoever it could be around the area or around the situation and stuff like that you know like this is unreliable this right here doesn't tell us nothing this right here it do do not tell us nothing about who committed this crime that's just my personal assessment i don't know how the court of law would take this this initiative and this type of evidence when this right here as you could tell got challenges and you cannot be 100 percent without benefit of the doubt that this person did that it's too many people it's too much people within the family tree that this could be a dna sample from anyone on his family tree but it links to him because he was the only one around but this sample could be gathered from anyone on his family members this is not this is not useful this is not reliable this is not it this system this new system that they utilize to try to identify the murderer of these four college students is unreliable this is what they call the last source because they don't have nothing in concrete so due to they don't have nothing in concrete they have to utilize this system as last resource because this is this is this is all they have they don't have nothing in concrete that's why I wanted to share this with you to get the latest updates. But the two groups don't connect. And those are the family trees of the mother and the father of Mr. X. And now you find somebody in this group who may let's play that again. DNA. You uploaded Let, let's play that let's play that again because I want everybody to, to listen to this very closely. Between me test and somehow figure out who their family was. So we just apply that to forensics, to cold cases. Could you do your best to explain how genealogy can be applied to crime and to solving cold cases? So basically what happens is somehow you have some data that you got from your DNA. You upload it to a database with people in it and you're looking for matches to some degree. We find out who these people are and then we start building the individual trees as we build the trees they're all related to mr x but they all have to be somehow related to each other so what you see is you start to see these trees connect and connect and connect because these people are going to have common ancestors because they're related and after a while you're going to find that 10 of those people connect with each other and the other 10 connect but the two groups don't connect and those are the family trees of the mother and the father of Mr. X. And now you find somebody in this group who married somebody in that group. And one of their children is who you're looking for. And that. And that 
should not be used in the court of law because they have too much people, too much, too many DNA samples involved. So if you have too many DNA samples involved within a case like this, it cannot be trusted. It cannot be trusted because the first and foremost is not accurate and we're looking for accuracy we're looking to make sure that if this guy is guilty is without benefit of the doubt these cannot be used in the court of law that brings us back to the knife sheath found at the idaho crime scene and the investigation's leading suspect who'd actually been stopped and released twice for traffic violations in the past month. Police have been on to Brian Koberger since at least late November after they'd used surveillance video to track the path of the white Hyundai Elantra back to the town of Pullman, Washington, just eight miles from the scene of the crime. They'd also searched vehicles matching that description and found one registered to the 28-year-old PhD criminology student and Pullman resident. Additionally, though Koberger's cell phone was turned off during the window when the attacks occurred, likely his attempt to conceal his location. Cell phone location information showed him driving toward Moscow before the attacks and near the victim's house at least a dozen times prior, dating as far back as August. But they still needed direct evidence placing Koberger at the scene of the crime. And I want to interject real quick. I don't know if y'all know that it don't matter if you shut off your phone, your phone still give out a signal. I don't know if you're fully aware that it don't matter if a cell phone is turned off, it still receive a signal. I hope you know that. Koberger's DNA wasn't in the database to match the sample taken from the knife sheet. However, with their knowledge of forensic genetic genealogy and relationship with a company called Osram, they set to work to use genealogy to confirm their suspicions that Koberger was the killer. In late December, police collected trash from Koberger's parents' house, and the FGG lab was able to confirm the DNA from the trash was the father of the person who'd left DNA on the knife sheath at the crime scene. In other words, Brian Koberger. Nearly seven weeks after the brutal Moscow murders, in the early morning hours of December 30th, after using license plate recognition cameras, police located Koberger and arrested him more than 2,500 miles away from the crime scene in Moscow, in the Pocono Mountains. And the following week, Koberger was extradited from Pennsylvania back to Idaho and charged with felony burglary and four counts of murder for the November 13th stabbing deaths of Madison Mogan, Kaylee Gonzalez, Zana Kernodal, and Ethan Chapin. Moscow Police Chief James Fry commented on Koberger's arrest, saying, No arrest will ever bring back these young students. However, we do believe justice will be found through the criminal process. So right there and then Chief Fry automatically just put a, a whole benefit of the doubt in this case. Like it's like it don't matter, it don't matter what we what we do here, right or wrong, it's not gonna bring these kids. So he just like giving ya a little hint of like you know we bullshitting you right so it don't matter if we bullshitting you this is not gonna bring the these young adults back and it's sad it's, it's sad that the authorities talk to the to the people with such a nonsense Dressed in a bright orange jumpsuit and no handcuffs, Koberger was oddly calm in his court appearances, despite the media circus and intense animosity coming from the victim's family's present. During a January 3rd hearing, his court-appointed attorney, Jason LaFarre, said in a statement that Koberger is eager to be exonerated of these charges and looks forward to resolving these matters as promptly as possible. And in a January 5th hearing, as charges were read for the murder of each victim, the families present were noticeably emotional as their child's name was read aloud. Though Koberger's trial is far from over, it seems forensic genealogy played a crucial role in law enforcement's investigation and in forging a path towards justice. However, there are still major challenges ahead for the mainstream acceptance of FGG. I mean, say I'm a regular person. I took a recreational DNA test. What's happening to that data? Is it gonna be sold? Is somebody gonna have access to that that I don't know about? And furthermore, who are these people that are using it? On this side, we have law enforcement, et cetera, DAs that are saying how it's gonna be used. You are telling me how to use my data? How does that work? Where's the dividing line? And that's where 
we've got to figure out, we've got to navigate that interface. Well, the